Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify rational expressions by multiplying. So in this case, you can see that we have an operation between our rational expression, which is the multiplication. And basically what we're trying to do is apply the operation and then simplify the product. Now, it's important when dealing with rational expressions, again, to remember a couple things about multiplying with fractions. So back in the day, you know, we learned well, you know, 1 half times 3 fourths. If we we're going to be multiplying fractions, we're basically just multiplying straight across, right? You do 1 half, so you do 1 times 3, and then 2 times 4 equals 3 eighths. Um, however, if you also remember, the main important thing about fractions is always to simplify. We didn't want to always just multiply things if, if we didn't have to. So for instance, if I had like, you know, 2 fourths times, uh, let's do 3 sixths. OK, what we always want to do, instead of doing 2 times 3, which we could do, 2 times 3, which would be 6, 4 times 6 would be 24, but then we'd always have to reduce our situation. We'd have to reduce our fraction, right? 6 goes into 24 four times, so therefore 6 goes into 6 one time, so it would be 1 fourth. But what happens is if we simply just simplified each fraction, 2 fourths is 1 half times 3 sixths is 1 half, then that still gives you 1 fourth. It's the same thing, right? So our important thing is we want to uh, simplify our expressions as much as possible. Now, in addition to that, we can also simplify. We don't have to necessarily, um, I guess I probably should have, eh, well. Uh, we don't have to necessarily simplify you know, our fractions. We can basically combine this all together. So another way to look at this is I could rewrite this as 2 times 3 over 4 times 6. And if I wanted to, I could kind of say, well, 2 over 6 reduces to 1 third. So therefore, I could have 3 fourths. And then that divides to 1 third. And what I'm just trying to state is, once you rewrite them as one fraction, so when we multiply, you know, we multiply straight across. So you can rewrite them as one expression. That's going to be very helpful for this. We wouldn't really use it in fractions. But again, the point I want to make is 3 twelfths, which again reduces to 1 fourth. You're still going to get the same result. So the main thing is, yes, we're multiplying straight across. Second thing, simplify as much as possible, right? And when you're multiplying straight across, our third thing is we want to set them up as one single fraction. So therefore, we can um, divide. We can use the division property for anything that's in the numerator with anything that's in the denominator. It doesn't have to be one fraction or the other. So I think it will kind of make sense once I actually get into some examples, which we'll do right now. All right, so my first example, I have x times x minus 3 over x minus 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 2 divided by x. Now, in this case, there's nothing I can simplify. You know, you look at each fraction separately and say, all right, is there anything I can do here to simplify this? No. Is there anything I can do over here to simplify? And the answer is no. So since there's nothing we can do to simplify them, what we're basically going to do is multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and create one big fraction. So when I do that, I basically get x times x minus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2 times x. Now everything is in this big fraction. And I can apply the division property for any term that's in the numerator as well as any term that's in the denominator. And basically, remember, when you have that division property, when you have a term that's the same in the numerator and denominator, they divide to 1. So let's see. We have the x minus 2 in the denominator, x minus 2 in the numerator. I have an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. Now I will say. Um, I prefer just to leave, I am OK with leaving my answers in a, a non-expanded uh, form. That's at least the way I teach. I mean, obviously, I think you should know that x minus 3 times x plus 3 is going to be x squared minus 9. But it is OK, um, at least for me in my class, to leave it just as x minus 3 times x plus 3. That is over 1. But again, divide, since you're divided by 1, we'll just leave it in that. Um, format. But it really all depends on the directions. Obviously, if you're taking a test and you know it's a multiple choice test, then that's not an answer. Then multiply that out and see if x squared minus 9 is an answer. If not, then obviously there was something wrong either on the test or uh, something that you something you did. But I think we we did OK. So it would have to be some of the test. But you know the main thing as far as for me, for the purpose of time, I am OK with leaving my answer in this simplified, um, simplified form and not having to re-multiply them back again. But that's just me. Your teacher might think of it differently. Um, all right, so in this example again, there's nothing I can simplify. So what I'm going to do is simple, or what I'm going to do is, um, oh, well, in here, we already had these multiplied, right? So, or I'm sorry, we already had these factored. Here, we don't have them factored. So what we want to do is simplify each expression first, 
see if there's something we can simplify in each expression. And if not, then we'll multiply them. So x plus 5 cannot be factored. But here, I can factor out a, a 4. So I factor out a 4 into x minus 4. And then here, I can factor out a 2. So that becomes a x squared uh, minus 16. Now, notice the x squared minus 16. That's a difference of two squares. So I'm not going to write it in there, but just note that's x minus 4 times x plus 4. Right, because that's the difference two squares over here. We have x squared, uh, x squared minus 25 is x minus 5 times x plus 5. I can tell you by doing rational expressions, you're going to get very, very good at uh, factoring. All right, so now let's go ahead and multiply everything together, because still there's nothing that is exactly the same in either expression. So I'm just going to put them all together as one big fraction. And I'm going to write out the expanded form of this. Okay, times x minus 5 times x plus 5. OK, so now basically what we want to do is find anything that's in the denominator and the numerator that's exactly the same, or with numbers, what can simplify. So if you remember kind of my first examples, I have two fourths. Well, we know that simplifies to 1 half, right? Um, so I'm just going to kind of keep that in there. So I'll divide those out and just rewrite a 1 half above it so I don't forget. Um, here I have an x plus 5 and an x plus 5 that divides to 1. Here I have an x minus 4 and an x minus 4 that divides the 1. So the only thing left is a 1 half, an x plus 4, and an x plus 5. Now remember, the 1 is in the numerator and the 2 is in the denominator. So I'm just going to write my answer over here. So therefore, I'll have x plus 4, there's really a 1, divided by 2 times x minus 5. Okay, But we don't really don't write the 1 there, so we can just write it just like that. Actually, let me simplify over here. All right. So this next example, it's going to be a little bit of factoring. Um, again, I know you, you just factor in trinomials. I mean, it's, I'll explain what exactly I'm doing. But um, you know, it just kind of comes into making sure you get practice, practice, practice on factoring trinomials. There's obviously nothing in here that's going to be exactly the same. So we need to factor it and see what we get. So here I'm looking for what two numbers multiply to give me negative 4, add to give me a positive 3. That's going to be an x plus 4 times an x minus 3. In the denominator, what two numbers multiply to give me 4, add to give me 4? So that's going to be an x plus 2 times x plus 2. Over here, I can factor out a 2 and a x. So when I factor out a 2 and an x, I'm going to be left with an x plus 4. Over here, what two numbers multiply to give me 3 and uh, what two numbers multiply to give me 3 and then add to give me negative 4. So that's going to be a x minus 3 times an x minus 1. Now, in the first two examples, I combined everything together, right? But in reality, you kind of notice that it really doesn't matter if I combine them back together or if I just leave them as two separate fractions. You can, the only difference, you know, here, these are multiplied. Here, these are multiplied. The only difference is here, we don't have a multiplication sign written. Here, we do. So everything, all those expressions, all those terms are multiplied by um, all those expressions are separated by multiplication. You know, obviously inside the parentheses, those are that's a different. That's a that's an expression of itself. So to save some time, I'm not going to write them as one single expression. I kind of did that for teaching purposes. Here, I'm just going to find terms that are exactly the same in the numerator and in the denominator, since they're still separated by multiplication. Um, oh, I multiplied that out. That should have been a two. Made the mistake. Good. Good catch x plus 2 and an x plus 2. <sighs> That's good. That is not right. That should have been a, wait a minute, what the heck is that? That's an x plus 4 and an x, x minus 1. Jeez, what the heck was I doing? OK, so that means that's still good. But that goes out x plus 2, x plus 2, I got one of those. That's good. x minus 3, x minus 1, that's correct. So I even made a mistake, but I caught it just in time. Um, that is not correct. That is not correct. OK, so you can see in the numerator, I'm now left with a 2x times x plus 4. And in the denominator, I'm left with an x plus 2 times x minus 3. For me, that's perfectly fine. You may have a teacher or a test that you need to multiply that out, but that's just simple foiling. Uh, not a big deal. The last example I wanted to include, because usually a lot of times when we're dealing with this, students, students feel like kind of comfortable. And then we throw one in there that's not written in fractional form, and they kind of get stuck. It's like, oh, what do we do here? Well, again, guys, I mean, really, the simple quick answer is just put it over 1. Write it in fractional terms, just over 1. 
So now we're going to do the exact same thing. Again, we're just going to get some practice factoring. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 10, add to give you negative 3? So that's going to be x minus 5 times x plus 2. In the denominator, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 15, add to give you a negative 2x? That's going to be x minus 5, um, and then an x plus 3 times, over here, what two numbers multiply to give you 21, add to give you 10x? So that's going to be a x plus 7 times x plus 3. OK, now in this case, you can see that you know, if I was going to multiply these out, you can see here I automatically simplify these before I even multiply them out. But since we've kind of learned that shortcut, here the numerator and the denominator are exactly the same. So the only thing left I have is an x plus 2 times an x plus 7. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you multiply and simplify rational expressions. Thanks.